Hey, ever wonder how Angular routing actually works? Let's take a look. I've used the Angular CLI to create an application. I'm running locally, so here in the browser it says localhost. But let's assume we've deployed our application and the user is accessing it using the appropriate URL. The server associated with that URL is located and sent a request. That server responds by returning its default web page, normally index.html. The browser receives and processes that index.html file. Let's open the browser console and navigate to the Sources tab. Here we see the index.html file. For an Angular application, the index.html file contains our script tags. These tags reference the application files, including the components and services that were transpiled and bundled into several JavaScript files. These application files are downloaded to and processed by the browser, and the application's main page appears. This index.html file is the one true web page of the application. All of our views are displayed within this one page. Hence, an Angular application is often called a single page application, or SPA. But our applications have lots of pages. How does that work? What we do is insert bits of HTML into the one HTML page, index.html. We do that in two ways, using a component selector, like is shown here, and routing. Let's look at the component selector first. The selector identifies a component. We use the selector to reference a component as a directive in our HTML. When the page is loaded, the HTML defined in that component's template is inserted between the selector element tags and appears on the page. Let's look at the source code. Here is the index.html file. Notice that it does not have the script tags we saw in the executing copy of the file. That's because the compiler compiles and bundles our files and injects those tags at build time. Here is the component selector. If we open the app.component.ts file, we see the selector name here. So the template defined here is displayed within the index.html file here. Let's use the Angular CLI and quickly create two more components. I'll open a new terminal window and generate a component called product-list. ng for the Angular CLI, g for generate, c for component, product-list. OK. Next, create another component called cart. ng, g, c, cart. There we go. Looking at the cart component, it has a selector of app-cart. And looking at the template, it displays cart works. Similarly, the product list component has a selector of app-product-list. And the HTML displays product list works. Going back to the app.component.html file, let's replace all of the CLI-generated HTML with our two selectors, app-cart and app-product-list. Notice that we picked the selectors from the suggestion list. This inserted the selector and, looking at the app.component.ts file, added the needed entries in the imports array. This example uses standalone components, so every component must stand on its own. That means that the component must define everything its template needs. Any selector that the template uses must be defined within this imports array. If you are new to standalone components, check out my video, Simplify with Angular Standalone Components. I'll bring up the browser. We see the templates for both components displayed on the page. Component selectors work great for displaying a component, or in our case, two components, within another component. Going back to the code, in most applications, we want five, 10, or hundreds of templates to take turns appearing on our Angular application's single page. 
How do we manage which template to display when? That's the purpose of routing. We configure a route for each component that wants to display its template on the page. When the user performs an action, such as clicking a menu option or button, we activate one of those routes. Activating a component's route displays that component's template. Let's give it a try. The first step is to enable routing within the application. Since we used the Angular CLI to create this application, the CLI did that for us. As I mentioned earlier, we're using standalone components. For more information on enabling routing in both standalone and ng-module-based applications, check out my video, Routing and Lazy Loading with Standalone Components. Looking at the main.ts file, the application is bootstrapped using the app component as the first component, and the application is configured with the app config file. Opening that app.config.ts file and reformatting a bit, the application configuration includes provide router and passes in the set of routes from the app.routes.ts file. Opening that file, the CLI didn't predefine any routes for us. Let's configure a route for each of our two components. Each route object includes a path, which is the internal URL for the route, and the component that should display when that route path is activated. The path can be anything. I'll call it products. The products route will display the component, product list component. Notice that since I selected the component name from the suggestion list, the editor automatically added the import statement. Then add another route object with a path, I'll call it cart, and component, cart component. Now we need some user action to activate these routes. In the app.component.html file, let's delete the two selectors and add two buttons. These will be our simplistic menu, product list, and cart. As they are, these buttons won't do anything. We need to associate each button with a route path. Use router link to link the UI element to a route path. Router link equals and the name of our path, products. Same for the cart button, router link equals cart. Bring up the browser and we see the buttons, but nothing happens when we click them. If you are familiar with routing, you may already know why. We haven't defined where the routes component should appear. We do that with a router outlet. Back in the app.component.html file, let's display the template below the buttons. I'll add a paragraph element, then the router outlet directive. Notice that we are now using both the router link to link our UI elements to a route and the router outlet, defining where to display the routed template. Let's open the app.component.ts file. Since we are no longer directly referencing our component selectors in the page, we don't need the components listed in the imports array. I'll delete them and their import statements. Because the template uses router outlet and router link, we need to add them to our imports array. The router outlet is already here, so I'll add router link. Recall that any components or libraries that our template uses must be defined in this imports array. Now I'll bring up the browser and click on product list. The product list route is activated and we see the template for the product list component appear. Click on cart and we see the cart template appear. Cool! But how does it work? Let's move our editor and browser side by side. Clicking on product list activates the product's route. The browser's location URL changes to match this path segment, and we see slash products appear in the address bar. The Angular router looks for a route definition matching that path segment. Products in this example. The route definition specifies the component to load when this route is activated, in this case, the product list component. The router then loads that component's template. Where does it display this template? Where we specified with the built-in routing directive called router outlet, and the product list template appears. 
That's how routing works. Thanks for watching. If this was useful, please like. And for more Angular content, please click to subscribe.